How do you grow into one of the world's most innovative floriculture companies? It begins with a dream and the imagination to make beautiful things grow beautifully. It takes time to root and demands a never-ending passion for breeding and producing annuals, perennials, and cut flowers that spark the imagination, that shape the market, inspiring customers, and bringing people closer together. Growing into a floriculture innovation leader means embracing cutting-edge genetic technologies. It also demands cultivating world-leading R&D capabilities and expertise. create varieties that customers love and growers trust. It requires investing in a global presence that ensures superior quality products reach customers wherever they are. For the past 70 years, Danziger has cultivated innovation and family tradition, blending passion with professionalism, enhancing technological excellence with trusted collaboration. What about the next 70 years? We leave that for the imagination. Hi, I'm Kelly Rada from GIE Media's Horticulture Group. Welcome to Danziger Talks. We're so happy that you joined us today, but before we get started, I have a few housekeeping notes. This webinar is being recorded and it, will, and it will be available in a few days on our website. We'll have time for questions at the end of the webinar, so please submit your questions anytime by using the Q&A function in your Zoom taskbar. Today, we're reviewing Danziger's 2023 debuts, breakthroughs, and forecasts for the future. Keeping up with new genetics is important as you engage with your customers. It is also an important part of maximizing all profitability in your business. Through innovative breeding and listening to what growers need, Danziger is continually improving greenhouse performance and ease of production, lowering input costs and increasing flower power. This all contributes to a better plant for the end consumer and a better bottom line for producers and retailers. First, I'd like to introduce my Andes. Mike is the market manager at Danziger North America. Mike's experience spans 35 plus years in the horticulture industry. He's grown woody ornamentals, perennials, and annuals for both retail and wholesale. His main area of expertise is vegetative stock production and propagation. Mike's been with Danziger for 10 years as an employee and previously worked with them for 10 years as a licensee. He also operates a Danziger R&D facility on his farm in Michigan with the help of his son and wife, where they trial more than a thousand experimental varieties each year in both indoor and outdoor trials. Thanks for being here, Mike. Hello, my name is Mike Fernandez, market manager of Danziger in North America. I'm here today to talk to you about um, our Caliber Coa and some breakthroughs in breeding in Verbena and New Guineas. Calibri Calibricoa. What's unique about um, Calibri is it's got a compact habit with a controlled growth. Little to no PGR will be needed in production. It blooms early enough for any market, so that means it will flower in a 10 hour day. Um, it's well branched and they are tested for pH sensitivity as all our Calibricoa are. Um, recommended uses um, for quartz, tidy hanging baskets, and also in combinations. New for 2023 is Calibri Dark Lavender. Um, as you can see, Calibri Dark Lavender um, is bred to have tighter inner nodes, a controlled habit, and uh, large flowers. Um, also, um, the color gives you a lot of different shades, so almost like a combo in one plant. Also new for um, 2023 is Calibri Exotic Red Bling. As you can see from the pictures, um, Red Bling is a, is a beautiful 
uh, novelty. It's going to add excitement to your Caliber Coa program. Um, it still has a controlled habit, early flowering, and is uh, resistant uh, to high pH. Another variety that's new to 2023 in Calibri is Pure White. Pure White has a very high abundance of flowers, a good compact controlled habit, and um, has all the attributes of the other Calibris. It fits very well in that program. Calibri is becoming a very uh, well-rounded program uh, with the addition of exotic red bling, pink bling, bling last year in 2022, um, purple bling, and also abstract guava, and then um, the existing varieties, cherry lace, uh, pink lace, and purple lace. Here is the rest of the Calibri series. Um, as you can see, a lot of nice, um, beautiful varieties. Um, of course, the, the new for 23, um, Calibri Pure White and Lavender. But also, there's some nice standouts here. Um, the Calibri Bright Red, um, Malibu Pink, um, Calibri Orange, which I believe is the best orange in the market. Also available in Calibri for Canada only are our uh, double caliber Koa, Calibri Double Copper, um, Calibri uh, Double Deep Purple, and Double Violet. Um, like I said, these are available only in Canada, um, and they have the same attributes as, um, as the other Calibri. Also new for 2023 is Iconic Apricot. Iconic is a series of larger plants, um, definitely well suited for baskets. Um, there's a strong uh, contrast in color in the flower, a good semi-trailing habit, um, blooms early enough for any market as all our caliber Coa do, um, and also tested for pH sensitivity. Uh, like I said, recommended for hanging baskets mainly or patio pots and combos. Here is the iconic series as it stands today. Um, a lot of nice, beautiful colors with a good strong eye, um, well suited for baskets. Um, some of the top standouts in, in my opinion is um, iconic pink. Um, iconic peach, and definitely the first one, iconic purple, and the iconic strawberry. Danziger is always breeding to improve varieties um, constantly, and so one of these improvements is the Leah Yellow Improved. It's new for 2023. Um, it's, it's the same Leah habit with better performance, a medium vigor, uh, definitely selected for baskets with a controlled uh, semi-trailing habit. Um, it's early flowering, so will flower in a 10-hour day. Uh, very large flowers, and it is uh, screened for uh, pH sensitivity. Uh, this means that it's um, not going to be as sensitive to a high pH. So here is the... Um, the, the Leah series as it is um, today, a lot of nice varieties also starting to add novelties like the abstract pink. Um, the dark red is, uh, I believe, one of the best reds in the market. Um, bubble gum, which is a very nice uh, pink color, and of course, Leah Blue and Leah Cranberry, which are also very nice varieties. Also new for 2023 in our Ombre series is Ombre Sunrise. Ombre Sunrise is a mix of beautiful colors, oranges and yellows, and is basically a combination in one plant. Um, they are definitely for hanging baskets, um, and they have the attributes of all the other um, Danziger Calibricoa, um, will flower in a 10-hour day, 
tested for pH sensitivity, and uh, the breeding is tighter in her nose, which is going to mean more flowers. Here is the ombre series as today. Uh, as you can see, um, nice multicolored varieties, ombre blue, ombre blush, ombre pink, which is, um, is probably the top variety at this point, and ombre yellow. Here is uh, the ombre uh, pink um, during the last season. Uh, the picture on the left is from a trial um, outdoors. And then the picture on the right is a picture of a grower's production outdoors. Uh, as you can see, lots of flowers and lots of beautiful colors. Um, definitely a little cool temperature will bring out that color even more. So now I'm going to talk to you about New Guinea impatience, specifically um, Sol Luna. Sol Luna is a hybrid cross like Sun Harmony and other Sun Tolerant impatience, but uh, it's nice to remember they're also good in the shade, uh, which I believe is a nice advantage uh, for the consumers to put wherever they want. Um, the difference in Sol Luna to the others is it is um, uniquely uniform and compact. Um, this is going to be for smaller pots, for packs, for quarts, up to a gallon. Um, you know, the important thing about uh, Sol Luna is it is a compact New Guinea. Um, so uh, just like a regular New Guinea, you have to watch uh, the EC, uh, keep it low. You'll see the best, best growth with a low EC. Um, and they're very nice in the garden. So here you can see the Soluna series. Um, there's three new additions uh, for 2023, electric pink, red, and ultraviolet. Um, and, and you can see here the rest of the series, which is a nice mix of, of a lot of colors. Uh, definitely the, the Soluna white is a standout in performance. I would say if you do anything, do that one uh, and you'll be impressed. Uh, but you will with all of them. Uh, the flowers are larger um, than, than the others in the market. And um, you're going to get that nice uniform habit. Um, and you're going to be able to grow it with uh, little or no PGR. I thought I would add this one last picture of Soluna. These are uh, in the trials at uh, actually at my, uh, at my place uh, where Danziger does R&D. And this was in the middle of the summer in Michigan. Um, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's not so hot in Michigan, but I can tell you that last summer we were above 90 for at least four weeks, uh, if not five. Uh, so they did very well. I planted these directly into the garden in July. And um, I specifically did that because I wanted to see if the flowers got scorched and they did not. So uh, you can feel comfortable, and like I said, it's a, it, it'll fill a bed very nice, either sun or shade. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about um, Harmony Colorfall. Harmony Colorfall is, is a breakthrough in breeding. Um, this is a truly trailing um, New Guinea patient that is uh, going to be great for baskets, um, has large flowers, um, you can see here, new for 2023, the dark leaf red, um, and a nice contract with the dark contrast with the dark leaves. Um, like I said, it's a breakthrough. It's truly trailing, uh, and I believe it will improve the looks of your baskets. And actually, uh, for the end consumer, it's going to be extra nice, and they're going to see a lot of benefits to this trailing habit. Um, but it's also a little uh, controlled, so it doesn't trail um, out of control. So in this picture, you can see the range of colors that we have in uh, Harmony Colorfall, a nice range. We have a good white, good orange, and then others, uh, um, neon red, which is a green leaf with red flowers, and then, then of course, the new uh, dark leaf red, which has a nice contrast of dark leaves and, and bright red flowers. 
Um, try them. If anything, you need to try them because I believe that you will see the benefits and also um, your, your customers will. Um, the other thing uh, that I think I need to add here is that they are not as sensitive to high EC, high salts as um, regular New Guinean patients, uh, which means uh, you have to uh, maybe worry less about salt buildup uh, when you have them hanging over your crop, uh, which will uh, you'll avoid needing to leach them. Um, this is very important, I believe, in production. And um, uh, I believe uh, also it, it makes a difference for your uh, customer as well. Another um, breakthrough at Danziger um, in breeding is our uh, Vanessa Verbena. Um, we have Vanessa Regular, which is a trailing, and also Compact Vanessa. There is a story uh, behind Vanessa, which is, um, you know, years ago, Danziger had other series. Um, we were uh, similar to other breeders. We had mildew, um, you know, cycling in and out of color and so on. Um, so we took an initiative about 10 years ago to breed and answer some of these problems. And we have it. Uh, Vanessa and Vanessa Compact are both um, going to be mildew tolerant. I'll dare to say mildew resistant. Um, they also get screened for cycling of color, which means they have to have color all summer long. So we trial, we select for this. We look for, um, uh, you know, the buds that are coming back behind uh, the, the open flowers and so on. So they work very well in the heat um, and also in, in cooler temperatures. And then, uh, you know, like I said, we have the regular Vanessa, but we have also Compact, which will answer all your needs. So new to Vanessa in uh, 2023, is optic grape. Remember, Vanessa is a little bit larger, uh, good for baskets, uh, good in the landscape, and also in combinations. And then Vanessa Compact, um, two new varieties, Vanessa Compact Bardot and Vanessa Compact um, Rosa. Um, these are great varieties, actually good for packs, quarts, combinations, and even tidy baskets. Uh, I believe you will be very happy with these and you can feel safe to put them in combos and not worry about finding out the combo has uh, mildew when you go to ship. Here is um, the Vanessa regular series. Um, as you can see, a wide range of colors, very nice varieties. Um, nice big flowers, and don't forget that they don't cycle out of color, um, so you will have color through the shipping, and also your uh, customer will have it through the season. And here is the Vanessa Compact Series, a wide range of colors, and I'd like to add something here um, that I didn't say in the earlier slides. Vanessa Compact and actually even Vanessa Regular does have a nice controlled habit, which means the the controlled growth, it grows like it's been, uh, a PGR has been used on it when it hasn't, um, which means it doesn't bolt and stretch the minute you stick it or when you transplant, uh, which uh, you growers out there, uh, know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so it will control Excel. You use minimal PGRs, uh, which is always better, of course, um, and will make a lot more attractive product. Now I want to talk to you about our uh, Durabella program. Durabella is our uh, combination program, which can be bought as a kit and also bought as liners from uh, several um, uh, propagators. Um, so you know, Durabella is designed to be a low input program, which means um, even in a 12 inch using only two cuttings, 
or three cuttings even in mixed species. So one of the key factors in um, growing a nice low input Durabella combination is the transplanting. And the way you do that is to put all the liners together in your hand and plant them directly in the middle of the pot. This will assure that they blend well. And actually with the low input, um, you're going to save a lot of money. Um, I, in all my trials um, and with customers that we're already selling, we see that you do not have to add extra time. So basically from sticking the unrooted to finish, uh, it's going to take you um, about 12 weeks in a basket, a 12 inch basket. And, um, you know, you can, uh, you know, from a liner, if you don't do unrooted from a liner, you're going to program about seven weeks. Um, I can tell you it's a, it's a great savings. Um, there's some nice combos, and all of them are tested um, by us in our R&D facility, but also uh, with growers. Thank you very much, and I'd like to, um, uh, to offer uh, any help. Uh, please contact us and let us know if you have any questions or you need uh, a specific crop plan and culture. Um, we're glad to help also with uh, photos and so on. So thank you very much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Now I'd like to introduce you to Lisa Heredia. She's in the marketing and key accounts department at Danziger North America. Lisa has been in the horticulture industry for over 30 years. She began her career at the university level working with variety trials but soon she developed a passion for the marketing and brand development part of the business as well. She has spent the majority of her career focused on retail sales, marketing, and brand management. She's been with Danziger for more than three years, directing marketing efforts and developing key accounts in the North American market. Thanks for being here, Lisa. Take it away. Hello, thank you for the intro. And I would like to start off with one of the most important crops globally, something that every annual producer has in their program, and that's going to be petunias. Now, all Danziger petunias are bred and selected for earliness, which means that you can put a Danziger petunias in your program and have confidence they will bloom early enough for any market. First one I want to talk about is Rim Markable, and this one is a standalone. This goes in our red carpet collection, which is items that we find that we don't think quite fit into any one particular series, but we feel like they have commercial appeal. And this one is exactly that. It is uh, beautiful. We think it's got great commercial appeal. It's got a mounding trailing habit, and it has a nice, beautiful, wide, white rim on it, hence the name Remarkable. This one is a vigorous grower, so I would recommend you start it uh, in a hanging basket and you could do large planters with it as well. This shows you a nice picture of what it looks like in a hanging basket, fully mature. So as you can see, it's really nice and starting to cascade over the sides of the pot. Then we go into the Cascadias. Cascadias are a really important crop. They are nice and vigorous. They fill a basket nicely and quickly. And two of our best sellers are going to be the Rim Cherry and Rim Violet. They have that nice rounded mounding and semi-trailing habit as all Cascadias do. They've been best sellers for a while, but we went back and we improved them, adding extra additional um, branching within the plant and then also a more stable rim type pattern. So you can see the finished product is really nice. Within Cascadias, these are all uh, where a lot of our novelties are. And you can see there's just a lot of interesting patterns and colors with the Indian summer being one that's really unique in the market with that coloration and then a lot of other patterns and rim types. But don't forget the solids. The indigo, vibrant pink and fuchsia are new for this year and they are uh, all really bright colors. I think they're gonna really stand out at retail and be really a pop of color in the garden for the consumers. This is the vibrant pink in the greenhouse and you can see that's about an eight inch rim pot you can see how it has a really nice habit to it and uh, it's just, just getting started. 
This is the full lineup with the solid colors for Cascadia's. I'd like to point out the hint of lime over here on the left corner. This one's really unique and that it's not white, it's not cream, it is how, like has a greenish undertone, which makes it really interesting for, uh, I would like to see it uh, used in combos because I think it's gonna have that same function as like an Ipomia with that chartreuse color to it and it would really uh, make anything you put against it really pop. Okay, now one of my favorite petunias, this is Capella. And the reason Capella is such a great plant and such a great series is because I call it the perfect petunia. And the reason I say that is that it pretty much checks all the boxes for the best petunia out there. It performs well in propagation. It has controlled growth in the greenhouse, meaning it's gonna finish a beautiful uh, court with minimal PGRs. But when it gets home with the consumer, it's gonna continue to grow and gain size in the garden. Also, it is going to be, uh, it is going to continue to grow, which means that it will fill a, a basket and you can get a high density basket production. This is perfect for that. So within the capellas, we have three new colors in addition to the mulberry on the previous slide, indigo, red, and white. And I love this slide because it shows you how you can just put these three together and you've got a perfect Memorial Day or 4th of July combo all in one mono petunia basket. So here's some of the varieties in the Capella series. You can see we've added back some salmons in the last year, the coral and the salmon. So we're getting back in those that color tone and then we've all of the items on this slide are just really great performers. With the Hello Yellow being the standout last year as a really nice vibrant just almost fluorescent yellow color. Within Capella, we also have some vein types, the pink lace and purple veins, and some bicolors. Okay, now we're in Splash Dance. Splash Dance is our speckled petunias, and these are really fun. People love them. They uh, Speckled ones have been around for a little while, and consumers are, are definitely continuing to show that they love them. The new for this year, we have Calypso Cherry. And the interesting thing about the Calypso cherry is most speckled petunias tend to have white speckles, but this one has a, you know, in addition to having a really beautiful base color, has cream and yellow speckles. So it really makes it a, a different coloration than, than some of the other ones in the line. And the thing that Splash Dance that we really uh, focus on when we're selecting for it is that it holds its speckles into the heat. And that's been a challenge with speckled petunias and that they're not um, they don't like to hold their speckles once it starts to get hot, but we trial dozens and dozens of varieties to get to this lineup in order to make sure they do hold their speckles as you go into the heat of summer. Here's the five new ones for 23, all very unique and different. We've got Calypso Cherry Moonwalk, Roomba Rose, Violet Vogue, and Fuchsia Flamingo. And then we have the, this slide shows you the additional four that we originally launched in the last two years. Splash dance are a little bit more vigorous. You can keep them in a quart with some PGRs, but they really are best suited for gallons and really show their stuff in hanging baskets. Okay, so no Danziger presentation will be complete. If you're talking about petunias, you cannot not talk about Amore. Amore is the five hearts on every bloom and is a real consumer story. Uh, the, we're starting to gain really great consumer recognition and a lot of that is due to the, the growers that are shipping into the stores really calling out the hearts. We don't require any branded packaging or any kind of branded POP but we do recommend it because growers that have used it have said that they noticed that when they use the branded POP or the branded labels or packaging that they do see significantly more improved sell through. So uh, the Mori is a really great grower friendly plant. It can be done in quartz all the way up to hanging baskets and combos and you can finish it in pretty much any size and that novelty color is really appealing. So here's the seven colors in the lineup with the king, queen and pink hearts being some of the most popular. And then this shows you the branded packaging uh, that I mentioned earlier. Just wanna show you what a finished gallon could look like in the branded packaging. Okay, Sally Fun. Sally Fun Farinacea. 
Uh, I like to call salvia farinacea a starter plant for new gardeners because it is almost bulletproof and pollinators love it. New gardeners get so excited when they see pollinators come into their garden. And this one is a really great shoulder season item because it does do well and really thrives in the heat. So really great for all those. Over here on the white, we have Sally Fun Pure White, which was new for 22. And I never thought I would say that I liked a white flower <laughs> as a favorite plant, but this is one of my favorites from the 22 lineup. And the reason is that it is so clean and such a pretty like fuzzy white color that from a distance, it looks like white velvet. And I've had um, multiple people mention that they, they saw the same thing in trials. It surprisingly a white flower drew them from across the garden to go see what it was. And over here on the right, we have the new for 23 Blue Lagoon. And if you're similar with our Sally Fun Deep Ocean, it's gonna be similar to that, but it's gonna have a little bit deeper bloom color. This is the full Sally Fun lineup. And uh, we have two different habits. We have the medium and the large habit. The large ones are more suited for larger pots and the medium type habits uh, we recommend for gallons and they just have a little bit smaller stature. Okay, continuing on with our shoulder season crops, we have Lantana. Lantana is just a na you know, natural in the heat, perfect for heat tolerant and drought tolerant programs. And all of these are bred in Israel, so you know that they've, they've really shown their stuff in the heat. And a big thing for us when we were selecting for this series was to make sure that they uh, did not cycle out of bloom because uh, you know that's the biggest complaint with some of the older genetic, genetics in Lantana is that they uh, have beautiful flowers, but then they go out of, they go out of bloom and they come back in, they go back out. So we wanted to select some that really do stay in color. So we've got the full size gem, which are going to be well suited for gallons and larger. And this is the full lineup. The new for 23 is going to be Citrine, Diva Pink, and Yellow Topaz. But we also have the Golden Ruby, that the original colors that are just, you know, the work horses. Everybody loves those two colorations within Lantana. And then within the Gem Compact, this is a sub-series of the Gem. These are more popular with the Southern growers because they can be finished in quarts and they don't get too, too big in a quart and but they do still fill a gallon so the southern growers really like the compact series with the orange fire being the favorite okay now we have namesia um namesia is a really interesting story because uh you know when i got in this business a, a very long time ago um <laughs> namesias were really beautiful early spring plants but they were definitely early spring plants they had lots of color, and but as soon as it, you got this, the, the hint of warmth, the hint of heat, it, they would croak or they would go out of flower and just look really junky. So they just really uh, weren't, weren't thriving and they weren't growing as a category. So, uh, but the new breeding of today, including the Nisias, has a lot more heat tolerance built into it. And the Danziger have shown time and time again in trials that they have some of the most heat tolerant amnesia on the market today. So that goes back to us breeding in Israel. We breed in Israel where it's hot, and then we trial all over the country. We trial in all, all different locations, hot, cold, dry, you know, wet, and then we select from that. So within that, we um, have come up with a series that can be done in 306 packs all the way up to gallons. And then if you want to take three colors and put them together, you can even do uh, mixed patio pots. This is the full lineup. And as you can see, there's lots of really great colors in here. Uh, the one that I think gets the most attention when it's seen in person is going to be that denim and the Inca. The denim is just a really interesting color. You don't see much in plants. Uh, it's not really blue. It's not purple. It's, it's a very unique color. And then the Inca is just a really bright golden color. So thank you very much for having me today. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you, Lisa. And now I'd like to introduce you to Randy Ewell. He's in the R&D department at Danziger North America. During his 30 plus years in horticulture, Randy has worked as a grower and on the technical sales support side of the business. Most recently, as part of Danziger's R&D department, 
He has assisted in the trialing, selection, and introduction of new varieties into the market. Randy also manages advanced grower trials and research projects with Danziger's Grower Partners. Thanks for being here, Randy. Hello, I'm Randy Ewell with Danzinger, North America R&D Coordinator. And today we're going to talk about season extenders within the annual and perennial series. So we'll start off today with the Portulaca Pizzazz. So this has been within the Danzinger line for quite a long time. And this is a mid-size, um, kind of medium flowered Portulaca. Of course, Portulaca are drought tolerant and heat tolerant, has a semi-trailing habit. And with all of the new genetics that Danziger is bringing forth within this series, they are much larger flowered and they have brighter colors. That's the key, in my opinion, for all of this, that with these brighter colors, you can just create a much better summer tolerant, heat tolerant group of plants for going for a season extender. So this is the entire pizzazz series. I think unique is the apricot with its color, but also with that dark eye. And then with the deep tones of the fuchsia, tangerine, and yellow improved, it really rounds off this series. A series that has been introduced a couple years ago was the mega pizzazz. So mega meaning larger flowers, but it does not necessarily mean that it has a large bulky habit. It's still very controlled, similar to the regular pizzazz, but the flower size is the striking feature. Also, I think, you know, the canopy has a full line of color and it, all of the flowers are displayed on top of the plant to give you that full blast. Mega Pizzazz would be an ideal product for the landscape market. So new for 23 is the Mango Twist and Pink Twist, two bicolor varieties, and then the Mega Pizzazz Red, one solid color. So this is the full line of Mega Pizzazz here. Uh, the bottom four were introduced a couple years ago and really has taken the industry by storm. They have realized this is a great series, ideal for baskets or that landscape product line. Pizzazz Nano is a naturally compact series. So this fits that ideal quart or high density production that a lot, a lot of the large growers will need. Early flowering, and I think with all of the new genetics that Danziger brings forth, larger flowers, greater display of flowers across the entire canopy, and for being a heat extender for those smaller containers, this is ideal. And here's three of the new solid colors, Tropical Punch, Fuchsia Improved, and Gold. The gold is a little bit deeper tone than the yellow and gives you a little bit more striking color. There's the full line of Pizzazz Nano, and you can see it would fit for most all growers. It is a full line, full colors, and ideal for that smaller container. Another item that not many people think about for a, a season extender is Lobularia. So Stream, being the Danziger series, new for 23, Champagne Stream. So white with a little bit of a yellow cast to it. This variety is a little more vigor and it will fill containers very quickly, but ideal for the landscape. Violet Stream is more compact, but has that nice bicolor kind of purple lavender tone violet tone with the white tips to it. Here you can see the entire stream series broken out into these size categories. Compact medium, vigorous, and very compact. The Labianas have had two new additions for 2023. 
And these are really unique for the fact that they will work well going into summer months, later spring. They have larger flowers with the larger brack or larger flag, as some people may say. So this is Lavender Stoicus. We consider this at Danzinger a annual because it is only cold hardy to zone seven. The violet has a beautiful dark purple flower with the lighter purple flag. And you can't see it in this picture here, but the Laviana white frost actually has a blue flower with these white flags on top. Great branching, should not need a pinch going into the final container and much more consistent from variety to variety um, with the same habits. Here's a picture of the full series. So the Laviana Grand Purple has a little bit larger stature, larger flower, larger flag, but the white frost and the violet is a great addition to the series. Then for the perennial line, that would be your season extenders. We have the Sand Gem Delisperma, which is brand new for 2023 coming forward. It has a nice large flower, bright colors, a little bit of a semi-trailing habit, but very easy to produce and not a lot of issues within propagation or finishing and very quick. Here you can see the two varieties with the little bit larger flowers coming forward. So a, a nice addition to our early bird purple. And these will end up opening a little bit earlier in the morning and staying open later, even as the sun goes down. Brand new series for Danziger, Gallardia Gusto. So four colors being brought forth all at once. You can see with the saffron, it has a yellow gold flower with a beautiful center of kind of a burnt red orange color, lemon, kind of a solid color. I think the key here is that as they continue to flower, they really do cover the older flowers and it always displays a nice fresh look as it progresses even through the maturation. Paprika is solid red, and I really like sweet chili in terms of that color, the bicolor, and its performance. Another addition to our Gara Gray series is this white. So a pure white flower color, um, easy to root, first year flowering, no bulking, no cooling, no vernalization. I think the key on this variety is that you will not have any black leaves or any discolored leaves with this plant where we do see on many of the rose, lighter rose colors or whites that you will see a little bit of discoloration. This variety has been very clean and for sales, I think it's a great product to move forward. Here you see the two colors within the grace line, the compact pink, and the new white. One item that we have started to produce in Guatemala at the farm is American Gold Rush Rudbeckia. So this is a intrinsic perennial product, but it's a great addition for us to be producing at our farm. And this is later season flowering item uh, so probably July, August flowering, but a beautiful rounded, mounded variety, as you can see, bright yellow gold tones and much different than the Goldstrom that we're used to, where it's kind of hit and miss and, and it just doesn't display the same brilliant color display. And then another item from Danziger is a vegetative echinacea. So Panama Red is really the very first vegetative echinacea out on the line. And it is end of June, 1st of July flowering, easy to root. 
usually about five to six weeks, not a lot of muss or fuss. And I would suggest that everyone make sure that if they're propagating it under short days, that they maintain a long day during that propagation because otherwise you will probably stall the plants and they will not develop new leaves. Ideally, it would be best to move this production into a spring or summer or even into fall because it responds to that long day situation. That's it for us and thank you very much. Thanks so much, Randy. So we are going to start the Q&A portion of today's webinar and we have several uh, questions coming in. Let's start with um, actually more of a um, suggestion as, a, as opposed to a question. And Stuart says that it would be really helpful to have a grower's Zoom on growing color fall, especially in the European countries with cooler and inconsistent weather in the summer. He's also seeing a lot of potential with that crop um, in his region. Do um, you guys have any quick tips as far as um, growing color fall with that um, inconsistent summer weather that he experiences? Um, yes, um, actually um, color fall uh, will respond pretty well to that, a little different than other New Guineas. And uh, part of the reason is because of the vigor. Um, so, um, you know, in all the trials we've done, we did see that the flowering was uh, very quick compared to, to other New Guineas. So from stick to flower at 72, it was about, it was about, uh, sorry, my cat's uh, saying hi anyway. <laughs> Um, it, it's basically, um, you know, for me at 72, which is 23C, it finished in 10 weeks from the URC, um, uh, which is about two to three weeks faster than most New Guineas. So, uh, of course, when you lower the temperature, you will have to add time. And uh, we can help you uh, there also because we do offer a, uh, I have a spreadsheet that will calculate the finish time by temperature, um, which it will be available. Okay, thanks for that answer. Um, another question for you, Mike, on the uh, impatient Sol Luna in a 25 centimeter basket, uh, Maddie would like to know how many plants uh, does he need to fill that 25 centimeter basket? I would put at least three. Three, okay. It, it, it will fill it with three. And he's also asking, should that be um, sewn directly to hanging baskets or started in a pot first? Um, yeah, that's, a, that's actually a very good question. Um, so in New Guinea, the quicker that you transplant it, the, fast, the, the faster it will take off and the bigger it will get. So um, direct stick is a good idea for Soluna. Um, and I think that will make probably the nicest basket. Uh, but then if you do a liner or a plug, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, do one that's over four weeks old. So um, it needs to be transplanted very quickly. Okay. Um, Lisa, uh, someone would like to know if the niches have any uh, fragrance. They do. They have a slightly sweet fragrance to them, and um, it's not something that's overwhelming, but they do have a slightly sweet fragrance. It's very nice. Okay. And also on the niches, um, what are some ideas um, for combos with uh, using anything from the Nisha series? Um, they actually all blend well together. Some of them are a little bit more vigorous, but we've noticed that when we put them together, they tend to all keep up with each other pretty well and make a nice, well-rounded well container. We do have some recipes that we've tested and trialed that we definitely know work together, and those are going to be in our Durabella lineup. So if you look at our Durabellas, we have, I think, three or four of them that are in there that are three-color combos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are these, and this, this question is for anybody, um, are these new 2023 varieties available to trial during the 2022 growing season? Uh, 
Go ahead, Randy. Yeah, they're available right now. Um, we have been sending out trials uh, since December. So yes, uh, please contact us and we will have them available. Okay, and speaking of trialing, um, we have a question, a very specific question about will any of these varieties be able to uh, be submitted to the Penn State trials? Yes, we will. Uh, we're kind of putting that list together now. So yes, we will. And um, Mike, on the Calibris, do they flower in short days? Um, yes, like we said uh, in the presentation on all our Calibricoa, they will flower in a, uh, in a 10 hour day. Uh, which is going to be early, early enough in any market, um, U.S. or uh, Europe, actually. Okay. And um, Mike, this question was also for you. Um, they would like to know what series would you compare Vanessa to? Um, you know, there's a there's actually a lot of new uh, series and and a lot of them with different attributes. I would think on uh, on mildew tolerance, uh, I would compare with Lanai because I think Lanai's had a very strong uh, uh, position in the market uh, for mildew tolerance. Um, for the for the controlled growth, I believe that that we're um, we're probably better than most everybody, in my opinion. Randy, this one's for you. When will um, American Gold Rush, the URCs, be available? Uh, they will be starting uh, week six, week seven, and then at full trial quantities, roughly week 12. Lisa, um, what are the finish time differences between GEM and GEM compacts? You know, that's a really good question. I think I'm gonna throw that one over to Mike. Um, you know, I, I didn't see a whole lot of difference uh, in, in our trials, but I will say that, um, you know, we kind of draw the line north and south for the two series. Lisa touched on it a little bit. Um, and, and the bigger issue is, is the sizing up. So in the northern uh, part of the country, you should use uh, jam or northern Europe e even use jam. And then in the south and uh, southeast, I would, I would then use uh, um, the compact. And, and uh, flower wise, um, they're both very early, actually. Um, Randy, uh, we have a question about um, getting a fall program started um, for, you know, for fall sales. What varieties do you suggest to build a solid fall program? You know, we, we actually put this list together um, this past fall. Uh, we did a grow out at Mike's in Michigan and kind of created that list. Um, a lot of the items that uh, we kind of touched on uh, during the presentation, I think is uh, fits that bill very well. And uh, if someone has specific questions or they want a list, we can definitely pass that along. They can just contact one of us. Okay. And Mike, you may have answered this already, but let me go ahead and ask it again, just in case. Um, how much heat is necessary to grow the Color Fall series compared to typical New Guinea impatience? Um, yeah, so so in any New Guinea, um, heat means development. That's what they're driven by. And, and so, uh, you know, the biggest thing I say, the reason I have the spreadsheet I told you about was because uh, you have to calculate and call it what it is. And, and an example is, so you can go from, from 72 Fahrenheit down to 68 Fahrenheit and add two weeks of production. So, so you know, it's always better to call it what it is. So if, if your greenhouse is colder, say uh, you're not uh, able to maintain, you know, 62 degrees, 
then you're going to probably end up adding four weeks uh, to that 12. So it, it's it's a pretty big difference. Color fall, um, I would say, is, is going to be more similar to some of the more um, vigorous varieties. Like, uh, you know, for instance, a lot of people grow some patients. Definitely, um, they can grow a little better with cooler temperatures. And I would say uh, color fall is, um, is very similar. Okay, thanks. Um, Lisa, this one's for you. Um, Stuart would like to know how Indigo improved compares with the current one. Um, I don't know, we may need a little uh, clear. He's talking about the Capella one. Um, the Capella that was in there before the Indigo was a little bit more vigorous and didn't quite fit the series. So we uh, decided we needed to, to just work on the branching and getting that habit a little bit more controlled a little bit more controlled growth so that matched the series better. So it is more moundy and it's definitely got better branching. Yeah, the, the indigo um, that was in um, Capella actually got moved to the Cascadias because it was quite a bit larger. And, and, and the new indigo matches Capella series so much better. And Randy, could you talk a little bit about what prompted the breeding of the vegetative echinacea? You know, it was something that I think a breeder was just working on and it came about. I think the true advantage is that you have a vegetative item that would have the quality of a TC item and not the cost of a tissue cultured item. So that's the benefit we feel. Uh, you know, we've seen them in trials with tissue cultured varieties as well as seed. And performance wise, we feel very strong that it's it will work just as well, but a much easier production than uh, tissue culture or even it, seed. Yeah, and it, it also, um, uh, so everybody knows, it is very reliable on giving cuttings. So in the that's always the problem with this type of item, and um, I can say that it, it lends itself very well to vegetative production. Um, so we're hoping to have more colors, definitely. Okay, well this uh, question is for each one of you. Lisa, we'll start with you. What is your favorite new introduction for 2023? That's a tough one, but I would say um. Calypso cherry of the splash dance is probably my favorite just because that color with the yellow speckles instead of white makes it really unique in the market. So I think it's going to be a real rock star in the next season. Mike, how about you? Um, well, I definitely like the exotic red bling. It, it, it's a, it's a beautiful plant that will, uh, will we'll make every grower look good every time they grow it. That's what I like to say. It's one of those plants. Um, and, and of course, I would say normally that I like the ones that sell. So the one that sells the most, that's the one I'll be happiest with. Randy, how about you? I have to say it's the Gallardi Augusto sweet chili. You know, the We've been watching these Gallardias in the system for quite a few years, and it's nice to finally see that launch. Well, uh, Lisa, I know you have an invitation for our um, viewers here real quick, so I'll turn it over to you. Yes, I'd like to just say thank you to everybody that um, attended the webinar with us today. I hope you learned something. I want to remind you to always feel free to reach out to anybody on the Danziger team if you need any assistance. Uh, we all work together very closely and can, and can help to guide you for whatever you need. Um, and I'd also like to invite you to come see us at CAST this year. We are going to be at Head Start in Gilroy, which is Northern California. And we would love to show you these plants all grown out in their full glory. And just a reminder real quick to everyone too, um, this presentation will be available on the Greenhouse Management and the Garden Center websites in just a few days. Um, so uh, be watching for that. And again, thanks for everybody's time. We are um, so appreciative of everybody being here today. Take care, everyone.